Well, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm your host, Apostle Edward L. Pitts, coming to you live from our ELPministries.com. We have trans, uh, transitioned from what used to be our marriage ministry and more page back to this page. And this is the logo that we're branding everything with. You're going to see more of that on different things that we will usher out. And I'm so thankful that God has done such a tremendous work in our lives. He is causing us to uh, move uh, into a deeper depth in the Lord. He's using, amen, the book of Revelation as a place, as a place where he can unveil greater dimensions of truth to us. For the Lord has blessed us with all spiritual blessings pertaining to life and godliness. I got a few announcements. I want to uh, 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 let you know what's going on before we move on into our uh, scheduled broadcast tonight. We've got a man, uh, like I said earlier, we have given back this marriage ministry and more page. It is now a Facebook group page. You can press that OCR and, and it'll take you right to that. Uh, to that page by using the camera. But that page is going back to its original focus, which is to focus on marriages, ministry, how they relate to one another, how they work together. How, what happens when they, I have a, 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 a couple that uh, one is married, one is not married, one has a call, one does not have a call, both have a call, both have ministries. How does that activity, how does that relationship affect the marriage and how does the marriage function in that well this is what that page is designed to do uh it's being headed up by prophetess mary pitts she's going to get into a lot of these relationships because it is without understanding we're trying to mimic something based on an expectation but the expectation might be based on obsolete knowledge and therefore we're trying to pattern something that has now god is is, is not fit for us and we calls, we, we make rules, we get upset because we're not coming up to an expectation that's not a reality. So we want to, amen, uncover that. We want to give you knowledge based on our 30 some years of being married into ministry as well. I hope that's, that's going to help a lot of us. Uh, how does marriage work when one or both are called and, and what happens when both are in lead positions or in, 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 in ministries that require uh, different traveling and different. How does the marriage work? Uh, and uh, uh, some some of us uh, learn through trial and error. Others just fail miserably at that and end up in divorce. Uh, and you think it's one person's fault or the other person's fault? It, it is not. It has to do with the dynamics of ministry and its impact on our marriage. So join us. Make sure if you have a call or if you're just interested in marriage on general, you need to uh, check out that page and get updated on things. Uh, in keeping with that, we, we, uh, we, me and uh, myself uh, and Prophet Pitts, we try to be open and transparent to let you know, hey, there is work concerning marriage. It's not just, hey, once we get married and we live happily ever after, and then I'm the man, you the woman, these are, no, 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 my, my brother, my sister, uh, marriage is instituted by God and anything that instituted by God will come under attack from Satan, who is the who is the uh, who is the author of confusion and the god of this world. So sometimes you need just professional help. This is what, Amen. We got Mr. Wilson who has helped us through the years. Just sit down and just talk through our emotions, our expectations, uh, things that we have a hard time explaining. He's a professional in that. We've asked him to come on and share some of his uh, professional aspects on how marriage works. He's a Christian. He has a spiritual background. So I, we, we're, we're, we're excited to have him. And maybe uh, this, uh, seeing things from different aspects and understanding, hey, it, it ain't just supposed to just happen because we got married. There are things that we have to work at. And he gave us the tools to help us work through those things. So we're excited about it. Mark the calendars. Uh, it's February 4th, every third, every Friday at 7 p.m. It's gonna be on a Zoom, so you need to sign up for that. Make sure that you're in place and learn how to invest into yourself. A lot of things, we, 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 we hope to make things happen, but it takes an investment. So again, we wanna thank God for him sharing and agreeing to come apart of that. We are so thankful that we want to impact marriages. Do you understand that 
a, a, a majority of divorces happened as Christians, not not just secular, but Christians. And and we think that because we have given our lives to God in the verbal aspect and from a standpoint of a witness that everything's supposed to happen. No, that's the beginning. You've got to learn how to walk in the understanding that comes from Christ, the knowledge that comes from Christ and the integration of that as it transforms your life. Your life is being transformed. Your spouse is being transformed. And the chemistry and the relationship is something brand new. It's not that something that you are gonna know just uh, intellectually. It's gonna, not something that you're just gonna know right off the bat. You gotta learn of me. The Bible said, learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. I'm trying to make you readjust your expectations because your rules and the way you behave is coming out what you expect from the other person. So let's let's learn, let's invest in ourselves. And I guarantee you that's gonna help you along the way in a tremendous way. It has helped our lives and, and we're not afraid, not ashamed to let you know that, hey, sometimes you need an outside counsel, you need outside help, uh, especially if it's valuable to you. Don't let, don't put uh, your own knowledge in the sole source of you handling things. It's amazing. If we get sick in our body, we have enough common sense to go to a doctor, somebody that knows more about how a body functions, what it needs, what is what's causing these things to happen. We will have a, we'll we'll have we don't have a problem doing that. But when it comes to things that are mental, things that are emotional, things that are relational, we tend to get embarrassed about that. We've got to change that because as long as a man thinks it's that way, the enemy can run rampage over your life. And uh, and and marriage or the uh, or the destruction of marriage is devastating. It could it could really harm you mentally, physically, emotionally uh, for a long time. So let's let's invest. Let's not sit back and let uh, old things be the way they were. Let's invest in our lives, in our spiritual selves. That's what we do when we come and learn of Him. His yoke is easy and His burdens are light. Again, we want to thank God for you. And in, 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 in lieu of that, let's pray. We pray every night for everyone uh, of, uh, of everybody on every dimension. Everybody is learning at different levels. We're maturing at different degrees and different levels. Everybody have different calling, different assignments. What makes this all come together? What makes this make sense of all is when we pray. The Bible said, men ought to always pray. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for allowing us to see another day. We thank you so much for, amen, your power to raise us out of that bed, to be in a right mind, to have a, a certain amount, a, a level of strength and peace. And we're thankful, God, for all of this is your doing. We're grateful, God, that you allowed us to, to have relationships, some that are married, some that are married to ministry, some have, that have worked. Since. We thank you for the degree of wealth and things of resources that you brought in our lives. And so, God, we give you the honor and the glory. And because of this witness, we want to give you all of ourselves because we know where our help comes from. And so as we live in a day uh, of, of coronavirus, a day of pandemics where death is all around us in the millions, in the multitude, and, and we don't have answers for those things, we are so grateful that you are a shield, you are a buckler, that you are a protector, that we can run to you, that our faith has value, that our faith is meaningful, especially when men come to the end of their own rope in logic, in reasoning, in scientific, and technology, when all these things, amen, will not obey death in our lives, we come to you because you represent life. You represent power. You represent, amen, hope in our life. So we thank you, first of all, we come to you with thanksgiving and praise. We give you honor and glory for what you have done, even when we didn't know you. And now that we're coming into a level of knowledge, walking in a greater amount of light, God, we come to you grateful for how you protected us in our ignorance. Now we want to do more for you. We want to present you in a greater light. We give ourselves to you. We don't lean to our own understanding. We put our trust in you, God, and we ask you to uh, bring us back 
to the knowledge that will cause us to represent you perfectly in this world. We we are so thankful that you've selected us and got given us grace and knowledge and mercy that enable us to walk up walk upright before you and bless your holy name. Now, God, as we live in this dreadful day called pandemic, we're also aware that we're living in a great day because your knowledge is being poured out in a, such a great dimension and the enemy of this, this world wants to keep us distracted from what you're doing by focusing on those things that are negative, those things that in, uh, embody death. But I pray, God, that we're not ignorant concerning Satan devices, that you have turned our hearts from death unto life. You're causing our minds now to embrace those words that will not go out and, that, and not come back void. We understand by faith that the things that are seen came from things that are not seen. And so, God, we give you honor as your word washes us from all unrighteousness, washes us from tradition, washes us from things that seemeth right, but the end thereof is done. We thank you, God, for giving us power over all the power of the enemy and that death is the last enemy. But we thank God, thank you, Jesus, for giving us overcoming power for you have over already overcome the enemy and have moved your, amen, your position, your authority, <clears throat> your epicenter to in our bodies. Our bodies were bought with a price God, to be an inhabitation of your spirit in the earth. So, God, as you raise us in our spiritual knowledge into a place, God, we, where we can embrace you and manifest you in this world, we give you honor and glory, God, for the things that you're showing us. We could not conceive these things through the natural man. Thank you for saving us. And thank you, God, for washing us. And thank you for transforming us. And thank you for lifting us. And thank you, God, for causing us to enter into the grace that you have bestowed upon our lives in Jesus name. We honor you God with all of our soul, all of our being for without you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. So we pray for those that have lost loved ones that are grieving and lamenting during this time. God, I pray that you will be a very special comforter to them right now and make sense out of that which is senseless. God, but strengthen us now and cause us to be resolved in you and to realize where our help come from. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Bless us, God, as we uh, uh, dedicate this hour or so, God, into understanding you. Uh, open up our understanding, our minds and our spirits that we will walk into you, not just intellectual, God, but in manifestation. Let that experience of transformation take place in us in this very hour. We thank you for the grace and the mercy that you've given us and the truth that we walk in, in Jesus' name. Now we bless those that have calling and bless those that are in influential position. God, let your spirit reign in them now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us again tonight. We don't take this lightly. We do understand it takes an effort and a dedication to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. So uh, because of that, we want don't want to take up your time, but we want to make sure that you're learning something new every night. We've been do on this journey for almost two years. March coming up will be a celebration of two years speaking every night. And we missed a few, but hey man, we 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 have endeavored to do this every night, every night. Not many we miss every night to reveal the word of God to you, to so that you might walk without a man condemnation walking in the newness of your life, not being afraid or condemned, but embracing what God has given you by grace. And so we thank you so much for the revelation knowledge, this God that's working within us, revealing or bringing back to remembrance those things that he's already done in our life. The Bible said that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings pertaining to life and godliness. So it is my custom to give salutations for those that have joined us. And we have a lot of friends around the world that have been joining us every day live, sometimes through the replay, that have been blessing us financially as it takes a whole lot us working together to get this word out. So again, we want to thank God for Papa Curtis. Thank God for Sister Patricia Golden Jackson. And, and Sister Patricia, I want to thank God for that contact with Pastor 
uh, Gordon, we're going to be working. I'm going to call you tomorrow. Hopefully we can get something structured to put something on paper. We don't want to just be hearers, but doers of the word, understanding that the doing of the word is the completion of our faith. So thank you for that contact. And you'll be hearing from me real shortly. And for those that really want to take it to the next level, say, how, Apostle, can I, can I be a part of the committee? Can I be a part of the group that's going to take it to the next level just to orchestrate things and work out my faith? Uh, I want you that can do that. Those that have skills, you've learned things professional that you say, I can give that to the Lord. I have marketing skills. I have sales skills. I have a, 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 a social social media skills or whatever the skills that you want to dedicate that to the God, to the Lord in a unified way. Let's come together and let's see what we can do unto the Lord. All right. So we thank you, Pat, for that. We thank you so much for Sister uh, Noble Zelma, Noble that's joining us, Sister Marion Hester, amen. Thank God for Brother Jimmy Bell that's joining us tonight. Thank God for Sister Bob Moore, the faithful one as well with Cop Papa Curtis. We thank God, amen, for Pastor Tangela Harris. We bless you, woman of God. We thank God, amen, for, amen, uh, Brother Stu Scott. Blessings on you, brother, for joining us tonight. Blessings on you. Thank God for uh, Sister Cassandra, uh, Pastor Cassandra Brantley. Uh, that's joining us. Amen. Thank God for Sister Rhonda Bogan that's joining us and for a host of others that's joining us. South Africa, northern part of Africa, European countries, uh, the islands and the rest of the United States in the European countries near Russia. Those that are in Russia, we're praying for that, that conflict that's bubbling up over there. Uh, war is a terrible thing. It should be the last resort or it shouldn't even be. It is one of the works of the flesh that tries to, amen, dominate. It's normally driven by greed or money or lust. It is the lust of the eye, men trying to dominate other men, creations of God. So we are praying against that conflict, that God will intervene, that the peace of God will be the dominant conversation and action amongst that area, that there will be no wars, no need for bullets or missiles or any of those things, strategies of war, we call them to not come together. We speak against those things that, amen, men will try to dominate other men through their own, amen, callous and carnality. And God, we, pre we speak peace in the midst of that, in the name of Jesus. We ask it in Jesus' name, we pray. We are looking for a time of the kingdom. We are praying for thy kingdom come. This is how Jesus instructed us to pray, thy kingdom come, because there is another dimension of consciousness in spirit that will enable us to move to another place where we do not see men in aspects of color, gender, uh, 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 economic conditions, nationalities. We're going to see God, uh, God's creation uh, the way that God intended, which is a manifestation of God in the earth. So we thank God for what God is doing. And we are asking those, amen, those biases and racism and all of those consciousness that's instigated by the devil that they will come to naught. They will not have any more influence over the earth. And those systems that are designed to perpetuate that way of thinking that they are come crumbling down as well. That God will put in leaders that have a vision of righteousness that are, or that are sent that are put in place to a uh, manifest or to exalt God in the earth. In the name of Jesus, we declare it and it is so. We bless, amen, all of you that have a play in this, that God will have glory in his people and in this world. So again, we thank God for you. And we're going to move right on to, amen, another portion of the of the broadcast. We call it our Q&A. It is where... We ask questions. It's a fun thing that God gave us. We ask questions. I'll ask the questions. You'll type the answer in the comment. It is based on the learning, things that you've learned. God has revealed some things. We want to pound that into your spirit. And to do that, we actually ask you to type in the com in the comments the answer. If you don't know the answer, that's okay. We will give you the confirmed answer. We will still want you to type that in. That action of typing is an action of faith that we decree, that decree and it will move it out of your memory into your identity. Why do you want it in your identity? There, it cannot be stolen. As long as it's a part of memory, it can be forgotten. But when it becomes bones of your bones and flesh of your flesh, 
it is reminded it cannot be forgotten and it becomes a part of the expression of the nature of God being revealed in your life. That's why we do that. There's a method to our madness. So we want you to, amen, to be a part of this and watch, watch the acceleration of God's spiritual knowledge arise and surface in your understanding and in your behavior. So you know what to do. If you're ready, just type in the word ready and we will move to that uh, part of the uh, broadcast. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just type in ready. You know that's what I need to see. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Type in the word ready. And once I see that, there we go. Pastor Tangela has typed in one. Can I get another witness? Amen. I got you. All right, Sister Rhonda, thank you so much. We're going to now move into the Q&A segment of this broadcast. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, Prophet Sean, Prophet, uh, Prophet Sean has joined us. Brother Jerome has joined us as well. Blessings on both of you. All right, we, these are brand new questions, and they're going to be a little, I'm getting a little bit tougher uh, because I want you to press in. I want you to embrace it. Glory to God. I, want, I don't want you to be amen robots. I want you to claim what God has done in your life. First question, first question is, amen, the word, a pull troll. Let me just, amen, give you the definition uh, of that. I, I went back and I learned how to pronounce that word just so you'll know that we're not just doing it. The proper pronunciation is a poltrono. That's the word is a Greek word, which translation means to loose, untie and what? A poltrono is a Greek word that translates uh, uh, translation means to loose, untie, and what? That word, al patrono, is coming from the Greek word redeem. The Greek, the word redeem. The Greek is al patrono. It's one of three words, and it means to loose, untie, and what? This is the first of those three Greek words. Al patrono is a Greek word uh, from the word redeem and it translation means to unloose untie and what all right brother brother jerome set free that that's a good one but that's not what i'm looking for <laughs> mm. papa curtis no you you're getting a re that's an old question we ain't using that question I know what it come from re means again, but that's not what I'm asking. This Greek word, uh, all poltrono, all polytrono, all polytrono, is translation. Translation means to loose, untie, and what? It's not redeem. These are new questions. I'm gonna give you five seconds. Not purchase. <laughs> it's to loose, untie, and release. Release. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. I'm gonna have to give the answer. I'm gonna have to get the answer. It's all around that. It's all good. But I'm gonna give the answer, and the answer is deliver. All Paltrano is to untie loose and deliver make sure you type that in i'm going greek on y'all tonight <laughs> to deliver amen we we normally use that word in the church how we look for deliverance redemption uh, our paltrono our paltrono means to loose to untie and to deliver that's one of the meanings of the word redeem in Greek. <laughs> I see, Pastor Cassandra, I hear you, to deliver. All right, we're gonna go Greek. We're gonna stay Greek tonight. The next question, next question. The next question is, um, also the, it's another meaning of the Greek redeem is agorazo, agorazo, is a Greek word which translation means to marketing or what? 
to marketing or to what? Agorazo, agorazo, a Greek word, meaning of redeem. It's a Greek word, agorazo, which means to market or marketing. And what else the other one? Ah, Pastor Cassandra hits it out of the park tonight. It means to buy. I, example I gave was the slave market. It's the slave market. So, amen. This word redeem is also related to that condition means to buy back. Jesus bought us back. We were slaves to this world. We were enslaved to carnality. We were enslaved to darkness. And he comes to purchase us back from that market. It was a, it was a system that was set up to keep that going. It was a market. Y'all understand? It wasn't a feeling. It was purposely done. Oh, glory to God. So he uses the word redeem from that aspect to help us understand what is going on. Next question. Next question. Here we go. Another Greek word. Amen. The Greek word uh, uh, pertaining to redeem also is exogorazo. Exogorazo is a Greek word which translate means to take out of what? To take out of what? This is another meaning of the Greek word redeem, of the word redeem, exagoraza. Exagoraza is a Greek word which translation means to take out of what? Three words I've used, Greek. Take out of bondage, close, but that's not it. Hmm. I use this in a rare painting. I think I talked about a rare painting on this one. When a painting is bought by a museum and it is done what? I gave you the best clue I can give you. <laughs> Exagorazo. Exagorazo is a Greek word which translation means to take out of Not abstraction. You guys gonna laugh when I put it in there. <laughs> Just type it in. You can't go wrong. Ah, uh, payment. Mm, that's close. Five, four, three, two, one. Those were all close, but here's what I'm looking for. It's to take out of circulation permanently. I gave you the example of when a picture, a rare picture is priceless pictures bought from one owner to another owner, finally do a, a company or a museum will take it and they will take it out and put it in the museum and they will not allow it to be sold again. It's taken out of circulation or the idea of buying and selling permanently. Y'all hear me? That is what that word means. If that's what Jesus has done for you, he has taken you out of the ability to be bought and sold under sin ever again. He's taking you out of circulation. You ought to be shouting glory to God. <laughs> I know I am. Every time I get a update, a another idea or another clarity of what he's done for me, my soul is just jumping because it ain't just a temporary thing. It's been, per you've been permanently removed out of that whole idea of the slave market, out of, car uh, out of the circulation of carnality. God has moved his residence within you and you will never Nothing will ever be able to separate you from the love of God. Oh, glory to God. Are you excited? Oh, glory to God. I don't know if, if, if you know how the game is played, but once you know, that's a touchdown, man. That, that is the, the game over now. This is, you've won. We have, been, we have been made winners, oh, glory to God, overcomers in Christ Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Y'all better pray for me tonight. I feel my joy and my joy of the Lord is my, my help, and I, I'm trying to stay focused. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 6, chapter the 17th verse, 
amen, uh, our spiritual man that is joined to the Lord is not that, is not, is the man, is not what? It's one word that I'm looking for. When our spiritual man that is joined to the Lord, it is the man that is not what? It starts with the knee. I, I kind of worded this wrong. He's a man that is not our spiritual man that is joined to the Lord is the man that is not what? <laughs> Ooh, this is a tough one. I'm, 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 I'm ratcheting up the questions now. This spiritual man, this oneness of this man that is joined to the man is the man that is not no, the spiritual man that's joined to the Lord is the man that is, oh, Brother Jer brother Jerome, I'm going to give you this one. I'm going to give you this one because this is what it is. He is not defiled. The spiritual man that is joined to the Lord, the spiritual man that is joined to the Lord is the man that is not defiled. What makes you defiled or polluted or mixed up or are not fit is the man that is not joined to the Lord. But the man that is joined to the Lord has not, has made himself not defiled, undefiled. You understand? Oh, glory to God. There's only one way you can be presented undefiled, faultless, uncorruptible, is to be joined to the Lord. And the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Make sure you type that one in. Next one found in 1 Corinthians 15th chapter 47 through the 49th verse is this. Let me just read it. I done forgot to clip, clip the page. <laughs> Here we go. The true versions of God is the old me, first man, or the new me, second man. Who are the true versions of God? Is it the old me, the first man, or the new me, the second man? And I took that from 1 Corinthians 15th chapter 47 to the 49th verse. What's the answer? The first man or the second man? The old me or the new me? The new me, that's right, the new me. The new me, which is also the second man. <laughs> the new me. That's right. The second man or the new me is totally acceptable. So the true version of God, the virgin, pure. That's what that word means, pure. It's not talking about celibacy. It's not talking about sex. It's talking about this spiritual signification. You got to understand this. Anytime we start talking about virgins or the woman, our mind automatically go natural and you miss the 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 the, the tightening you miss the, the the things that God is trying to tell us amen so we got the amen stay focused as we get deeper into the revelation of God we got to understand about where this was happening it was happening on on an island and it's island it was sick in in, in revelations First chapter, first verse, there's a part of the scripture that says, signify by his angel unto his servant John. The word signify, signify. It tells, it's telling things, a story by signs or communicating by symbols. Signify. You understand? So you got to get the discernment of what these things mean to get the proper message or the understanding that will produce the knowledge that we, we can use through wisdom and understanding. Do you understand? Now, we're living in a day now where God has opened up the heavens and now he's making those signs that are now being revealed, uh, being making plain to us so that we understand the relationship of God and man or God in me Christ in me the hope of glory you understand we're eliminating the idea that we have to go somewhere 
and we're replacing the idea that God has come to us. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the hope of all men, the hope of my power, the hope of my success, the hope of my salvation, the hope of me reaching my full potential or the manifestation of God likeness in me called the sons of God is the fact that God and man are one or the fact that God now lives in the man or the fact that God now inhabits the man. Every other hope has to be, amen, done away with because, amen, God has permanently, amen, made sure that your hope cannot be stolen. It cannot be polluted. It cannot be, amen, uh, keep hidden because he has moved his residence out of visitation mode into inhabitation. He lives in you. Can you get your mind around that? That the God that visited Abraham is now the God that lives in you. The God that talked to Moses is the God that now lives in you. The God that revealed things to the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and, and all the other hosts of prophets, Samuel, and a list of others, he lives in you. Your, your ability to complete God's mandate, task, assignment, the, your ability to, to, to be presented faultless before God, that when they, when men see you, they see God, is the fact that he lives in you. The reason why you have overcoming power and the, that Satan is deathly afraid of you, of becoming what God has called you to become, is the fact that he is the author and the finisher living within you. You understand? Religion places God anywhere and everywhere except in you. It won't talk about that. It'll say you gotta try harder. It'll say you, you gotta, you, you, you're a sinner and you gotta ask God for forgiveness. When in fact, Jesus took your sins. If he took it and didn't give it back, then you can't have it. You only have the thoughts. You only have the mind. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So the problem is not sin. The problem is you're consumed with the thinking that you are. So you got to change the way you think. And we do this by allowing the mind of Christ to have its way in our lives, to transform our life. Do you hear me? <laughs> I, I, am, I am absolutely, amen, serious because once you hear <clears throat> what the spirit is saying. See, religion won't, won't, won't give the spirit a voice. It'll only talk about the Bible as the scriptures, as the only voice, as the only word of God. When in fact, by revelation knowledge, we understand that the word was made flesh. The written word was made flesh and dwell among us. And that process and that activity has not stopped. Jesus, we know him as the word made flesh, dwell among us. But here's the exciting news. He wasn't the only one. His ability to save us and deliver us and unloose us, amen, uh, that Greek word, uh, Palatrano, he did that. He also took us out the slave market, Aragozo, uh, 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 Gorazo, that's the other Greek word. He took us out the slave market and then, amen, he completed, amen, this by taking us out of circulation. Ex Zagarazo, the last Greek word, it was complete. It wasn't one of them, it was all of them, making us completely set free from the idea of sin and death. But religion completely turns that around by saying, and walking by sight, every time you, you trespass, you're a sinner. No, God has not imputed that trespass upon, upon you now. He has taken you from one glory to another glory. He's changing the mind, changing the nature. So what are you saying? If you make a trespass, if you mess up, get up. <laughs> His grace is sufficient for you to get up. You understand? He is not imputing that. He's taking you. He's moving you. And as long as you keep it moving, he's going to take you from one glory 
to another glory. You are going to see the first man of yourself pass away and you're going to behold the new man that is his, whose identity is here with Christ come alive in you because his mind is being replaced. Do you hear me? Oh, what joy. Now there is no condemnation. Why? Because every round is going higher and higher. He is not out to give you. The sky is not falling down if you mess up. Get back up. Examine yourself. Learn. Glory to God. Ask for forgiveness. If you ask, he'll give it to you. And he will release you with the knowledge to overcome. That's what it is all about. He he wish above all that you prosper and be in him. If God wanted to kill you, he all you have to do is not send Jesus. He sent Jesus to a man, deliver you, untie you, loose you, glory to God, take you out of the world, which is the slave market, and take you out completely of circulation so you'll never be tempted that way again. You'll never walk under bondage again because he lives in you. You can't put this life under a bushel of sin and death. You understand? He gave you the light. Jesus is the light of the world. He gave you that light not to be under, but to cause you to walk above and not beneath. Do you hear me? Oh, glory to God. I hope you can hear and know how great your salvation is toward God. And this book is revealing things that religion did not know. The Bible say, amen, those things were held in mystery until a certain time. I want you to know that every time another move in the spirit takes place, there is also a shift in the world that tries to hide that, keep that, amen, under wraps so it is never known. And amen, the Bible said, where there is no vision, the people perish, y'all hear me? So it is our obligation to make sure that we do not allow this gospel, this good news to be hid because it's hid to them that are lost. Y'all hear me? And so as we understand that, we move, we, uh, we, we hunger after, we seek after those things. And the part of the, the transition of your life that's going to be accelerated is when you begin to embrace reveal knowledge. There is knowledge that is unrevealed and there's knowledge that's revealed. Knowledge that is unrevealed is simply unknown. It's there, but it's not known. So if I gave you a car and you can see the physical car, you know what is no, you know what has to happen in order to have that car benefit you? You have to become a driver. That doesn't, doesn't mean go get an extra hand. That doesn't mean bleach your skin. That doesn't change the color of your hair or the texture of your hair. It doesn't change your gender to drive the car. It requires a certain knowledge. It is the knowledge that makes you become. What is God doing? He is becoming bones of our bones and flesh of our flesh. There is a transition of consciousness, of knowledge. It requires the mind. When I speak of understanding, it, 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 it denotes, it points to and relates to the mind. When I speak of knowledge, it relates to the mind. When I speak of wisdom, it relates to the mind. You understand? It's not relating to a miracle. It's not relating to some things tangible. There is a author on the inside of you that is causing the understanding, the knowledge, and the wisdom embodied in the mind of God to be available and active in you. And that activity is transforming your character, transforming your identity, transforming your reaction, transforming who you are and how you carry yourself. Without the knowledge, it can't happen. So God is releasing himself to you, through you, through the process of revelation. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Do you understand? So I thank God for the, for the written word, but it brings me to the knowledge that there is a living word. And that living word is the personification of Christ himself becoming you. You are now the sons of God. The Bible says it does not yet appear. In other words, we don't see it happening in its manifestation, in its all glory, but the seed has been planted. And just as the seed has been planted, the woman is now pregnant with the seed. She says and getting prepared for new life. This era that you're going through, the testing and the trial of your faith is in preparation 
of a new you. You understand? And so when you realize what God is doing, you're going to rejoice. Even though you're, you're going through trials and tribulation, you now understand that the trying of my faith is much more precious than silver and gold. Do you hear me? So there are some things that we have to clear up because if that knowledge is not purified, it works against you. You understand? The Bible declares there's a way that seemeth right. The end thereof is death. So as we as we get into this part in Revelation's 14th chapter, we're, we're going to read the uh, just a portion of the first verse, but we're focusing on the fourth verse that amen, encompasses uh, the, the and, um, let me just read it. First verse, and I behold, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. We told you what that all means. And with him, 144,000, we told you, as that signified, glory to God, symbols and signs is signifying something else. So the 144 represents the sons of God. Those that have the mind of God that sits with God or walks with God in the spirit. Mount Zion is a spiritual high place. One of the highest mountains in the Middle East over there in Zion is symbolic of a high place in spiritual consciousness. That's you. It's just the mind of God. We ain't mystifying this anymore. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And it is available to whosoever will. Let them come. If you gravitate to God, that knowledge will, amen, begin to be released in you. He is bringing things back to your remembrance. The reason why you, wa you walk the way you walk is because you have been conformed to this world. That's not something that, amen, because you are weak. It's if you're in the world and you do not have the light of God, you don't have that knowledge, there's certain things you just don't know you can't function in. If you don't know anything about cryptocurrency, you won't be able to function in. If you don't know a thing about just the natural dollars, dollar, you know what I'm saying? You won't be able to function in. If you don't know about how to play music, you won't be able to function in. You're not stupid, it's just missing knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? But we can get knowledge. The Bible saying all you're getting, get an understanding. So tonight, part of this exercise is to open up your spirit to revelation knowledge that brings things back to your remembrance. When that starts to trigger, that's not based on logic. It's not based on reasoning. It's not based on effort. It is based on my ability to humble myself, which is the fact that you're listening to me tonight. It's a sign that you're humbling yourself and allowing the word to wash you from all unrighteousness. In other words, to renew the way you think. You understand? As a man thinketh, so is he. So uh, we understand what all that fourth verse, it says, these are they which were not defiled with the woman, for they are virgins, for they are virgins uh, 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 in, that, in that verse. You understand? So I, I say, anytime I start talking about a woman or virgin or fornication, all adultery, your mind automatically gravitates to the natural because it is so prevalent. It is so prevalent in the natural. We understand it. We, we have a, a preset definition of what a woman is. We have a preset definition in our mind, what fornication is, what adultery is, what being defiled, that's somewhat is, you understand? And so when we read the verse that, that John is saying, was signified by the angels. In other words, just because I said woman, there is a symbol. The woman signifies something. It's not a natural woman. When I say defiled, it means something spiritual. When I say virgin, it means something spiritual. Don't use your natural, amen, definitions or default values because it brings you down. You will not walk in that high place in the spirit. So we have to wash that definition out of our brains and get the definition of spirit that will release the understanding, that will release the knowledge, that will release the wisdom on how that impacts me. Because every version ain't on, ain't on female. You understand? Every version is not a male. It's not talking about that. So these are not all females on a mountain in the Middle East. You understand? With a, with a woolly animal called a lamb uh, standing on that mountain. No, they symbolize something. You understand? I, I said this and I keep saying this because you got the amen, not go on automatic, automatic pilot. What we do a lot of times is we just hear things 
and we just uh, uh, assess what we know to what people are saying. If I spoke Latin to you, I was using some of the Greek words. If you don't know the meaning of those words, it's, it'll be over your head. It has no impact on you. Likewise, if I'm speaking English and you have predefined definitions, you're not going to get what I'm saying. You're going to default to that uh, natural definition. You have to consciously say in your own mind, no, 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 it doesn't mean that. It means something more. And that is when your conscience opens up to what else does it mean? You, There's a spiritual man in you. There's a natural man in you. The first man is natural. You have experience and define yourself as a natural man. Your knowledge is based on the level of natural, what I taste, what I see, what I smell, what I see on TV, how, how culture has defined things. And there is a spiritual man in you that God is awakening that is, amen, found with Christ. Christ in you now is the second man, the spiritual man, the Lord from heaven, oh glory to God, that is enabling you to be where he is. Which means now these words have to be defined from the spirit, not from the natural. Because we're not trying to deal with the natural man. We're, amen, are walking in our spiritual selves. You understand? So, amen, it's going to take a little effort. To make the transition, just like what I use those Greek words, and I was explaining that you're not probably going to re remember uh, the Greek. You're going to remember the definition. You understand? And if I use those Greek words every day, what you do is make a correlation to this word means this. Now, even if it's Greek, it'll have an impact on your life because it has, you place definition to it. You understand? You've defined it. Oh, glory to God. So then. So we've got to break down the woman, which represents something, and the version that represents something in this verse because it's not natural. It's symbolic. It is communicated in signs. Oh, glory to God. Now, as an example of that, I'm going to just fuck, go to Isaiah 4th chapter, the first verse, to show you what I'm talking about. The Bible says, in, the day, in that day, in that day, when I say in that day, there is a moment in time. The Bible said there's a time for all things. So in that day of time, what's going to happen? It says seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. So let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Now, again, if you stay natural, just plain old natural, you're going to be praying if you're a man, oh, I want to be in that day. I'm going to have seven women coming after me, and they ain't going to have no problem, amen, being all my girlfriends or all my wife. That ain't what that's talking about. You understand? Oh, glory to God. Now, listen, the church is represented by a woman, symbolically. The church is, sick, is represented by a woman. I went through Revelation talking about, amen, the seven spirits of the seven churches, and also the woman in the wilderness representing the church. You understand? Jesus being the head, married or espoused to that. So the church represents, amen, the receiving part of the spirit, which is the man, which is you. You are part of the church. The church ain't just full of women. I know naturally more women outnumber the men, but there are a few men in the church, which represents we're not talking about natural. We're talking about something higher, something that is that is encompassing both male and female. Oh, glory to God. Just as God defined the man in Genesis. He said, I'm, I made a man after my image and in my likeness, both male and female created he, him, and called their name Adam. You got to, amen, realize there are di different dimensions. And when you're talking about God, you have to, amen, talk about God and relate to him from a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, lazy men and people that have, amen, arterial motive, amen, take the word of God that should create a natural fear or reverence and take, then apply it to the natural to control you from a, a spiritual slash natural aspect. That's called tradition. That's called religion. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Their intention is not to help you. Their intention is to control you. You're, you will never grow. 
You could be an usher under religion for 50 years and they'll give, clap you and say you did a great job. That is not the will of God. God didn't die to make you an usher. God died to make you a son. His knowledge, amen, is greater than that of an usher, a deacon, a, 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 an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor. It's greater than that. It is the sonship. You understand that when you see me, you shall see the Father present your body as a living sacrifice. That's not a living sacrifice. It's not just, amen, how you serve in the natural. It is your identity in the spirit. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Nevertheless, the woman, amen, represents, amen, the church in the Bible. The relationship of Christ to the true church is the relationship that the Bible, the, the, uh, the Bible identifies as husband to his wife. You understand? Those are, are examples. They are relational. They are expressional. Jesus, amen, when Paul talked about it, he talked about how the man should, amen, uh, uh, submit himself to his wife, how the wife should submit himself to, to the husband. And that's good advice on the natural. But then later on, he says, but the mystery is I speak of Christ and the church. You understand? There is some value in understanding it naturally, but I'm telling you there is a deeper meaning between the spirit of Christ and the church. Christ is in you. Christ is in the male. Christ is in the female naturally. And they comprise the church and the spirit of Christ, the head, amen, that head of that spirit, the knowledge and the clothing that I wear in the church is coming from my husbandman, the Christ. He clothes me. He gives me his name, just like in the natural. When a woman marries a man, culturally, what should have happened, they're beginning to change that even now. Amen. The husband gives his name to the wife. That is traditional. That has a message in it. It's, it's showing you, amen, the relationship of Christ giving you his name or his nature to the rest of his body. Oh, glory to God. He's married to you. He will supply your food and your raiment. And, and, and while the natural church do or not, amen, go on to know the significant value of the spirit, they stop at the natural and then try to control the relationship using, amen, spiritual words, but walking in a natural sense. They never elevate to the spirit. It represents the spirit in, in the man. There is a spirit in man that giveth him understanding. It is not the you know, doctrine or your creeds or your man-made uh, uh, car carnal uh, 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 rules in the church. I understand that. I've been in this for a long time, 40 some years. I understand as babies, you want to have structure and, and you're under governors and tutors. But the whole purpose of putting you under governors and tutors, defined as apostle, prophet, vengeance, pastors, and teachers, and all the other helps, is to help mature you. It's not to rule you. It's to grow you up. It's not to oppress you. Oh, glory to God. It's not to condemn you. It's to make you greater than the apostle, greater than the prophets, greater than. It's to bring you and present you into a place where you can walk in the spirit without the governors, to grow you, to mature you, where you can have a one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with the spirit. So the spirit can talk to you and you got ears to hear what the spirit is saying. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And if you create a structure, that will permanently be over you. It will be, it will be an impeding structure that will, amen, at some point steal your relationship with Christ. You will never come to know it. You understand? So in the natural, we, we raise our children, we give them everything, we send them to school, buy, buy them food, we buy them clothing, buy them expensive tennis shoes. We want them to be exposed to everything. But you know what? As parents, we are hoping one day they will, amen, be greater than us. We don't want them to go to school and do exactly what we're doing. We don't want them, amen, to, to go through all that. We're not making a sacrifice so they can be less than we are. We want them to be better, make more money, have a better, amen, better life. We want them to have their own place. We're not there, amen, to keep them on our roof forever. No, sir. If we did, we are crazy and poor parents. We are there to make them see eye to eye. As, as they're raised up, as they're growing, they say crazy things. They see things the way they see it. They think and life is unfair. They don't understand why they can't have their way. They don't understand this and that. They just 
just come to the table. They eat the food. They go to bed. They wake up. They got they got their birthdays and they have school days and have and they expect everything to evolve around them. But we are teaching them there is a spirit which you will walk in as an adult where amen you will learn how to take responsibility to how to be the head and not the tail how to amen make sacrifices there's a different language that comes from the parent than the child and so there's a generational gap or, or a communication gap but amen what we're doing is we're letting them see on our backs on our sacrifice when they get into their own place the words that they thought we were crazy starts coming back when that first light bill hit then their eyes open up and say, you know what? I, you, I got to pay for this. You're going to pay for it a bit in the, in the dark. You understand? Now, all the theories that they had is going out of the window. When you have to apply and live in the lifestyle that you say is you. Oh, glory to God. And so God wants to make sure that this spiritual knowledge that he wishes of all that you're blessed and highly favored is in your, amen, vocab. It's in your experience. It's a part of your life. It's not something you have to think about. It's something that's bones of your bones and flesh of your flesh so that you can see the manifestation or the hidden part of God operating in your life. Do you hear me? Oh, glory to God. So the husband gives the wife the name. The wife is not supposed to give the husband her name. And I know as we go on, these the, the ideas is becoming, amen, knowledge so that we're not walking in tradition anymore. I understand that. But while we are in that part, what was happening is it was a demonstration of how Christ is giving you his name, how Christ is meeting your need, how Christ is taking the responsibility of, of being the head over your life. You understand how we're living by another method, not natural, not logic, not walking by sight, but there is a divinity. There is a knowledge. There is a process of believing God by faith and watching miracle after miracle happen in our life, and it did not come through walking by sight. You understand? We wear his nature. Then we wear his clothing. Uh, understand the clothing that I wear and the clothing that my wife wear is something that's pleasing to each other. We're not, amen. She's not dressing for another man. I'm not dressing for another woman. Glory to God. Sure. So we, we want to make sure that we clothe ourselves, not in our own works of righteousness, not in our own rules and regulation and laws and commandment of men or tradition of other things. We are there to please each other as we are yoked together in singleness or oneness. Oh, glory to God. You understand? We have to grow together. We have to mature. You understand? We are not, some people, uh, 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 I'm in it now. Y'all Y'all just bear with me. Because there are some things that are so sensitive in marriage that it will actually, I've seen people just lose it. You understand? It, it can touch your heart in such a way. It, it becomes a part of you in such a way that you you destroy things. Sometimes, uh, I'm sad to see, they'll even kill each other because they can't work it out. They can't, amen, there's a, there's a drawing that's, that causes me to be yoked to you and you yoked to me, but the knowledge that I have is a knowledge of individuality. It's a knowledge that keeps us apart and my heart is tearing every day and they can't take it. It was not a logical union. It was a union that is taking place in spirit and by love. God is love. Love makes you do crazy things. You understand? So we understand that they're not doing your own thing. You can't do, you can't, you can't control God. You can't control love. Love controls you. It'll make you say what you ain't gonna do, you'll wind up doing it a thousand times. You understand? So what's, what's happening, the point that I'm trying to make is there is an operation that's taking place in you based on, amen, this idea of oneness and the woman is more than just the female. Naturally, it becomes, amen, a position in relationship. There is the spiritual head and there's the body that receives. The woman is the receiver. Oh, glory to God. Not, not the female. It's the receiving part. So God speaks. He gives. And we receive his word. Jesus, amen, walked in as a receiver. He was the son of God. He, he was given by God. He, he said, I don't do anything except the Lord tell me. He tells me and I, I become the expression of his word. God tells us and we become the expression of his wisdom, the expression of his understanding, the expression of his knowledge. You understand? 
That's why it tells us that we are humbling ourselves. We're not doing that just to humble ourselves. We're doing that because we are the expression or the union of the oneness of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, glory to God. So then, as you understand all of that, I've explained to you what the virgin is. The virgin then is not a woman and is not a man. The virgin then is talking about a consciousness, a relationship with God. You understand? The virgin of those that have not defiled, defiled with the woman. You understand? What, what, is, what, is the, what does that mean, Apostle Pitts? There are those that praise God who are being processed or redeemed from the earth. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm being redeemed from the earth. I'm being redeemed from the old man. I'm being redeemed from just thinking naturally to thinking spiritually. You understand? I'm being unloosed. I'm being set free. I'm being untied. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm out of the, uh, of the slave market of the world. He has redeemed me out of the world. You hear what I'm saying? He's taking me out of circulation. I ain't, I ain't running with the guys no more. I ain't running with the gals no more. I don't think that way. I have a new mind. You understand? And once that new mind comes as a new person, that is the virgin. That is the one that's operating in pureness. That is joined to the spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? The spirit is pure and what you're joined to is pure. If I'm joined to something that's not pure, that's the heart. Of it. You understand? I can have a thought that's not pure. But if I believe that, that's the heart. Of it. That ain't pure. You understand? But God can purify me. You understand? He can purify me by washing me from all unrighteousness. He will present me that way. So this undefiled, this undefiled or defiled is a state of mind, a state of being. We, we wonder about the action, the carnal part, the, the lying, the fornication, all of that. We see that with our natural eyes, but we are not getting to the root from which it comes. And so we easily condemn people while you might be doing the same thing. Oh, glory to God. But because it ain't visible, you can skirt your way. You can call on the name of Jesus loudly and profess yourself to be a Christian and go on your merry way and do the same thing. You can ignore the living of Christ together. You can ignore the Christ in you and do exactly something different. You understand what I'm saying? I understand that. I've, I've known that. I've done that. You've done that. You understand? There is none righteous. No, not one. We've all seen it and come short of the, you don't want to own up to it. You want to make people believe by your own efforts. That's happening. You're a liar. You understand what I'm saying? And all of us are liars. Jesus was a liar. Jesus was a whole monger. You, how, how could he not be if he took your sins? He did it, but he didn't stay there. There is evolution. There is a movement. You're not a sinner anymore. Just as Jesus was raised from the dead, you are being raised, amen, to another level, a pure level that God calls virgin. Oh, glory to God. You're pure. I go to the grocery store and they call it virgin oil, virgin olive oil, or virgin this. It means there's no additives. There's nothing additional. It's just coming from a single source. You are coming out of the spirit. You are more than the soul man. You are more than a natural man. You are more than your record. You are more than your failures. You are more than, amen, any of that foolishness. You have a spirit and there's a spirit in God that is purifying you and bringing you back to your original pure self undefiled you're not defiled anymore you are the virgins the 144 the sons of god they went through the transformation none of them were pure without the transformational power of god working in their lives none of them reach a high state of consciousness without losing an old man none of them amen could walk in a high place without coming out of the valley god broke you he redeemed you you were all tied up there was none righteous know that why quit kidding yourself quit making somebody life harder than what it should be when you were in the same situation yourself we did not come to condemn one another. We come to rejoice in the victory of look what the Lord has done. If you're still trying to do it yourself, you are harlot. You're, you're adding something to it. You're taking away something from it. Oh, glory to God. He has called us out 
in the Old Testament. He called the people out of Babylon. He said, leave the harlot woman behind. That's what it said. He didn't say, hey, I'm calling you out of Babylon and all the women that you were sleeping with, leave them behind. Well, what about the women? What about the children? What about it? No, he wasn't calling, amen, uh, 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 the fleshly woman, the harlot woman. He was saying the system, the consciousness, the way Babylon has, has conformed you, the way you believe now, you've got to leave that behind. You're not a part of the Babylonian system. You're not a part of this world. You're not a part of this, uh, a part of the man-made design things to oppress you. You have been set free. You have been untied. You have been exonerated. You have been, oh, glory to God. You have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. You're not hoeing with anybody else. You understand? We ain't laying with anybody else. We're not expecting something else that's gonna make me whole. You know, we're not looking for another help somewhere that's coming from him. I know where my help comes from. Oh, glory to God. And God is a God above all. He doesn't need anything else to make me pure. He is pure. So he gives me himself and he presents me faultless as an expression of himself. That's why he, we are the sons of God. We are the offsprings of God. You hear what I'm saying? Let me share just a little bit. I have to hit this because this is one of those foundational things from which a lot of belief comes and it, it entangles us and we remain fearful because we can't believe God is good. There ain't but one good and that's God. If he ain't good, you ain't gonna find nowhere else. You understand what I'm saying? So in the Bible, thesaurus, another word for, amen, being defiled, or I'm use the term undefiled, is uncorrupt. Just like corrupt is synonymous with def defiled, then uncorrupt is, the, is synonymous with undefiled. You understand? So let me use that flip side of this to show you what I mean. In 1 Peter, 1st chapter, 4th verse. 1 Peter, 1st chapter, 4th verse, it reads, to an inherited, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Every time you see in heaven, you've got to take this symbol and realize that it means spirit, in spirit. In heavenly places are in spiritual places. You understand? God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit. I could also say in heaven, you know what I'm saying? But it's in spirit because Heaven has been polluted now to thinking as some geographical place. It is not. Heaven is the abode of God. That is the definition of what that word and term means. Well, the abode of God is wherever God says he dwells, right? So the Bible says, what? Know you not that your body is the dwelling place that he abides in you, that you were bought to be an inhabitation or an indwelling of God through the spirit. There is a spirit in the man, Christ, all of this. It's talking about the placement of the spirit. It's not whether there's a spirit, it's the placement of the spirit that will cause you to walk in the liberty and the power of God. I've got to quit. My time is up, y'all. I got to come back this tomorrow and finish talking about, amen, the virgin and the consciousness of God. Because once you get this, you're not going to have any condemnations. You're not going to be thinking about sin. You're going to be thinking about the, gl the glory of God and the treasure of God. You've got to, amen, get your mind stayed upon those things that are above and not beneath. And God is a treasure. And once you understand the value of that treasure, you're going to be hard. It's going to be hard to snatch your mind and put it on something else when you realize we have a treasure. Oh, glory to God. As long as you don't see it as a treasure, then you can be deceived. You can be, amen, turned away. You can be, amen, uh, uh, you can be, amen, beguiled. You understand what I'm saying? But once you realize, amen, what God has given, you no weapon form can prosper against you. Oh, blessed be the name. I've got to quit. I just simply run out of time. We'll start this up tomorrow, and I want you to be with us, amen, tomorrow because we got a lot of things that we got to cover. We want to cover it, amen, in a way that you will not be, amen, worried about anything but joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Listen, amen, let's, let, let's, let's, let's fulfill our faith. Amen, many of you have sown into this ministry and I duly appreciate that. I'm in the process of purchasing a, a, a duly truck and I've seen this in a vision and the truck, amen, will, will pull uh, 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 what I call a flatbed behind it, but it's gonna be a mobile stage. I'm gonna do that so that when I take my tent, I can put up the 
10 in one day and we can go at it wherever I need to go. And your help in getting us purchased this, it's gonna be a custom made stage, just a trailer that folds in and I can just hook it up to the truck and just pull off and go to the next town. You hear what I'm saying? We got to get this gospel out because amen, it is the missing part of what God is saying. The good news, amen, comes in the releasing or the unveiling of Christ. It is that which causes you to realize you have a very present help. You can help me to do that tonight as you have helped me so often. I want to say thank you for all of those that have given to this ministry, given to and believe in this, this good news, this gospel. Will you, amen, sow a seed in, amen, this cash app is dollar sign, e pits give, dollar sign, e pits give, upper right hand corner is where you can give into this ministry for those that got that app. For those that do not have the app, reach out to me, show me how, amen, I know you want to give, you say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not literate in that. I want to give, but I want to give a different way. Just tell me how you want to give on that and email me at L-F-M-M-E-D-I-A-D-E-P-T at gmail.com. Let me know how you want to give and I'll make sure it's set up so that you can give, give that way. God gives seeds to the sower. And as he gives those seeds, our, amen, fulfillment of the faith, faith has to be seen is when we sow back into God. He gives us seeds to sow. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, not to spend it like the sinner man did it, but to sow it for the furtherance of the gospel. If this gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And there are thousands of sons out there that can, amen, be a voice of many waters if we reach them and let them know, hey, it is normal. It's okay. The heavens have been open, and this is the gospel that needs to be preached, amen, to men's hearts. We thank you so much for being a part of this. Pastor Tangela, Sister Bob Moore, Papa Curtis, all of you that have reached out to us every night, uh, uh, Prophet Swanee, all of you that have been blessing us. We are so thankful. We're in a brand new place because God sent us here. But we didn't hit, we didn't come here to retire. We came here for the furtherance of the gospel. Help us lift up, amen, the standard and the conscience of men that we might walk in the truth unto a perfect man. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Until tomorrow, may the blessing of the Lord run you down and overtake you.